All right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land? That's right, Mr. Muscarella is coming at you in these last two examples, examples three and four, on how to graph quadratics in standard form. If you haven't seen the videos for examples one and two, be sure you watch those, because that will give you the foundation that you need to work through these last two examples. So now, let's go ahead and get on with our show. Example number three, we have the equation y equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 9, which means my a value is negative 2, my b value is 8, and of course my c value is my last term there, negative 9. So negative 9, of course, that c value, that's going to give me my y-intercept. That's always the very first and easiest thing to do after you take a look at and analyze your abc values. So 0, negative 9, that's going to be about right there on my graph. Now next, I'm going to go ahead and find my axis of symmetry, my AOS. So my AOS, I'm going to write that here for this one. My AOS is going to be x equals, now negative b over 2a is the formula that I use to find the AOS. So negative b, so negative 8 over 2 times negative 2. 2 times negative 2 gives me, of course, negative 4 for the denominator, and I have negative 8 in the numerator. When I reduce that, I just get 2. So I'm going to take that value, 2, and I'm going to move over to my graph and where the vertical line x equals 2 is, I'm going to draw that in there as a dashed line because that is going to represent my AOS, my axis of symmetry. And it's not negative 2, silly, it is just 2. So x equals 2 is where my AOS is. That's going to divide the parabola in half. My quadratic is going to be divided in half by my AOS of x equals 2. Now, next thing. Let's find the vertex. Now the vertex I know is going to be a 2 and then some number. To find a number, I've got to put in 2 anywhere there's an x in my original function. So I want you to write that like this, y of 2 because we're plugging in 2 in. So y of 2 is going to be negative 2 times, substitute into 2, so I have 2 squared, plus 8 times, substitute into 2 again, and then minus 9. y of 2 is going to therefore be, so be careful here, a lot of places you can make careless arithmetic mistakes. 2 squared, remember, Pam Dodge got to do exponents first. 2 squared is 4, then multiply by the negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. My next term, 8 times 2, 16, and that negative 9, don't forget them, just hanging out there. And then, of course, when I find the sum of those three integers, I get negative 1. So my vertex is at 2, negative 1. So 2, negative 1, so right there, booyah, is where my vertex is going to be. Now, the movement pattern that I'm going to use is going to be based on my a number. My a value in this case is negative 2, which tells me two things. One, my parabola is going to open down. So with my a value being negative 2, I know it's going to open down. Now normally, I move 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 4, 9 is going to be my movement pattern. But since I have an a value of negative 2. I'm going to multiply the 1 form 9 by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So from the vertex, remember, that first number, 1, 2, 3, that's always going to be your left and right. So from the vertex, I'm going to go over 1 and then down 1, 2. Boom, put a dot. Same thing on the other side of my axis of symmetry. Go 1 to the left, down 1, 2. Boom, put a dot. My next movement is going to be 2 to the right and left, but then this time down 8. So if I go over 1, 2, down 8, well, that's going to be my y-intercept. But if I do the same thing over here, 2, down 8, uh, I will be right here. All right, I've got 5 points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all together. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and connect those guys right here and draw that as best I can on there. Now my table of values. Table of values might be a little bit tricky because this one looks like it's off the graph, my y-intercept, but we already know what that is. So my y-intercept is of course 0 and then negative 9. And I can analyze that because I got that from the c-value of abc in my original parabola equation here. So 0, negative 9. My next point is going to be 1, negative 3. So 1, negative 3, followed by my vertex at 2, negative 1, and then of course, because I'm symmetrical, around my vertex, I'll put a little v right there, so my next point that I go up is going to be 3, same value as my previous one, negative 3, and then lastly I'll have 4, and then that will be negative 9. Even though that's off the graph, because we know this pattern, these two terms will have the same y value, these two will have the same y value, so we know what all those y values are, because we got mad math skills. So those are going to be the 
table of values piece that we have right there. And lastly, of course, we're going to put our increasing and decreasing pieces on there. Now, increasing is going to be over here on the left side, and the decreasing is going to be on the right. Because remember, the slope on the left side of a parabola is going to be the increasing. It's going to be positive. So I'm going to go from negative infinity up to what? That's right, my AOS number or the X coordinate of your vertex. Either way, that value is 2. So I'm going to increase from negative infinity to 2. And I'm going to decrease from 2 to infinity. Booyah. Wow, that's not too bad. We got some mad math skills, so let's get after that. That was example 3, so hopefully you did okay with that. Example number 4, boom, here we come. This one is going to be totally on your own. So what I want you to do is take a big, deep breath. Count to 3 and then hit pause. When you're done, unpause the video and come back and see how awesome you are because I'm sure you will get it right. So on the count of three, we're going to hit pause. Ready? One, two, three. All right, how'd you do on this one? Hopefully you got the same picture that I did with the same information that I've got. So be careful. Check very, very carefully. Make sure your work and my work match identically. You're able to find the same coordinates for the vertex. Your ABC values are the same. Your y-intercept and your AOS are the same, and of course, you come up with the same picture and TOV. Don't forget your decreasing and increasing intervals as well. All right, that's it for this little video series on how to graph standard form quadratics. So by now, you got this stuff. So practice that on your homework, and by now, you should be rocking through this. All right, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day, and I'll catch up with you later. Peace out.